All right, so uh, this is going to be a real-time video. Welcome back to Darian Danju Art. And um, so this one uh, is an exercise I've been doing with Schoolism where I colored Laura Harrier. And um, well, the exercise was to color whatever character I wanted. So I, I had a reference picture of Laura Harrier um, that I'd found online and then um, use that as reference to, to create this picture following the process that we're being taught in my schoolism class, um, Intro to Digital Painting with Andrew, Andrew Howe. So, um, all right, so I'm just gonna take you through this quickly. And it's, this is gonna be a good, it gives you a good idea of one way of coloring. This is definitely not the, the only way of coloring, but it's kind of, um, um, so a lot of people color with color right away, right? So their digital paint, they use color immediately. Um, but, but for some projects and maybe, maybe it's a thing for beginners, but also maybe it's just a thing for depending on the project, um, artists will do their sketch in grayscale, um, you know, like they're using pencil and then kind of sh shade it, uh, just as, as you would with, you know, pencil or, you know, kind of like a, a graphite rendering. Um, and then in that way, they are able to pay attention to values because, you know, unless you're kind of well-trained, it's harder to see what the true value is of what you're painting um, unless, you know, if it's in color, right? So you, you just have to know, you, you know, what the value is within that color. But with grayscale, obviously, it's easier to see if something's brighter or darker, then you get a better idea of, of values. So I think that's the reason some some people sketch their do their sketches in grayscale. Um, so let me just get to it. Um, I've, I've already done this, so this is gonna be kind of me walking you through the process and, and I'll show you maybe some aspects of it, but just give you, give you a good idea of this, this really neat um, kind of technique. Um, so essentially, just to give you an idea uh, what, what I started out with. So, so let me take away those. So actually when I was about to turn in, when I turned, I was about to turn in the painting, um, all I had to do was create color to the painting um, and and I didn't, I hadn't added these lighting layers, right? But this is something then while I was getting excited and experimenting with these blend, blend modes on the layers, which is like super duper exciting. It's really fun to experiment with what you can do you know, in digital painting that you simply can't do in traditional and leads to a lot of other creative things. But let me, let me get rid of stuff and just kind of, let's just start this thing from, from like scratch and just show you how I built this up. So I do a lot of separate layers because I just like to separate things. It's easier for me to understand what's going on later on, like when I'm doing a video. All right. So so this would be a typical grayscale drawing, you know, or sketch as they call it, that you would do. And then after that, you apply amazing, it's amazingly easy to apply color because if the values are defined underneath there, then everything that you do above them, if you use the right blend modes, you, you know, you can actually just, it'll actually just take on the values that are underneath. But this is exactly how I started. So um, I started, with this this was the last assignment that i turned in and there you can see the original picture that i was referencing so i had that there referenced in and i basically started from a sketch and then so what i had was um so this is flat color I'm not really sure what I, when I got this here, how, I, how that ended up there, but I guess at some point I, I tweaked something. I, I don't really think that I would have drawn this by hand. So I think this is the flattened version of the drawing, but like, so here's the actual drawing. That's the flattened version that I did when I turned it in red. And then in order for this exercise, I turned it all to grayscale. And I did that by, um, I used saturation I took the red scale and I just went into mode adjustments and I used saturation. So if you know, if you went to, you know, adjustments or whatever, adjustments on this, turn that off. Hold on, let's just do it again. So just, th this is just to show you how I got to the gray scale. It's really easy. Um, 
So it's flattened red, right? So that's my flattened red. And the reason I sketched it in red is because I knew it's a person. So sometimes it's nice to have an undertone of red before you go to your color phase um, so that you'll have some of that undertone. But that was before I knew what the assignment was because you know I'm new to the class, so I didn't know where he was going with that. So I just did red, even though he said to do grayscale. So what I did was I did the rails, I wanted the grayscale now as was assigned. And so you just go to hue and just turn down your saturation. And then see, that's how you get grayscale. That's one way. There are other ways to do it, but that's the way I did it. All right, so just cancel that. Um, and so boom, that's a copy of that layer. So there's my grayscale layer, right? And then one by one, I'll show you how these layers are built up. And then I'll show you how I added this little extra lighting effect. All right, so this might not be the exact order that I did them in because I, I definitely reordered some things as I was going along to get the get certain parts behind. But what you do, you kind of look at the painting and you can see what level things are on to decide where to order them. So I'll go in order from back to front and then, uh, you know, and you can just kind of figure out what makes sense based on what should overlap other things. So what you're doing though, let me explain that, is just You've already got the tones in the grayscale layer. The values are there. The highlights are there and the dark shadows are there. The midtones are there. Everything is there as far as like the values and the lighting, where the lighting's coming from and things is already kind of defined by the highlights coming from the right side of her body where the shadows you'll see are more on the left side of her body. So when you color in this approach, you don't actually color in values. You just color in flats. So that's why all these layers are called flat. Um, that's just me naming it that way. Just it helps me to understand what I'm doing to know I just need to color flat and not layered stuff. So for example, you've got the back, the flat arm back and, and actually what I did, I, I was sampling colors from the from the original picture. So to make my life easy, what I would do is I would just go sample like a midtone color from that picture, which you can do by hitting alt. If you're on a brush, you just hit alt and then it allows you to sample any color and you can see there that it's picking uh, you know you just click on that and then you hit I don't know why it's not wanting to do it of course it doesn't work while the video is recording so something's going on it's holding me back oh it looks like it's frozen Yay. I guess we're using a lot of CPU right now. So, okay, let's go back to brush. And then let's hit, you have to be on, on brush, and then you hit alt, and then you can just sample a color. Don't know why that's not working. Alt. All right, I'm not sure I should spend much time on this, but so for some reason, I don't know why that's not working. Normally that works smoothly, but I do know, notice there's a bit of a lag right now on my computer as well, because I'm, I'm actually trying to drag the picture. Yeah, there we go. And it looks like it's getting backed up. So I think it's just there's a lag on my computer because I'm recording at the same time. So let's just not get deep, too deep into that. You hit Alt while you're in a brush, and typically then you're able to... Um, you're able to sample that color. All right, so there's the flat arm back. And as you can see, it's a sample of like the middle road color from the picture. And then back there where her arm is in shadow, it's a much darker brown. So I picked that similar brown and kept going. Then there's the flat part of the jumpsuit in the back. I definitely didn't paint that last, but it's just, it's, it's back of the picture. So that's why it's down here. Then there's the flat color of the legs. Um, and as you see, as I'm bringing these in, it's, it's, it's taking on the shape of what's underneath, but actually to show you that what's actually happening. So that's what I'm really painting, right? I'm just painting flats. So that would be it with the red. So actually I don't want to... I want to be able you guys to see. I want you guys to be able to. 
So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna copy this picture real quick here. So I can turn this, I wanna do that so I can turn it off so you can still see the reference while I show you the layers coming in. Okay, so, so you see there the legs, right? And all of these are sampled from, I just sample from the picture basically what I see, the middle of the road color, and I keep going. Uh, the heels, as you can see, I painted those with a kind of a white. The next level is the flat of the face. It's just a mid-tone of her face, and then you just add it in. Flat of the torso, which there's obviously there's the jumpsuit part of the torso, but then there's the part that's sort of just upper, up, her upper torso, and that's colored. There's the flat of the arm in the front, which is much brighter because there's a lot more light on it. The flat of her eye whites, the flat of the actual eyes, which is more like, it, I really meant to say irises, but that's whatever. The flat of her hair, there's the flat of her jumpsuit. So literally when you're painting these in, you're picking colors and you just, I'm just painting that flat color. I don't worry about values shadow lights any of that because all that's going to be done by my gray layer underneath so the flat of the stocking lines to you know because she's wearing fishnets jumpsuit i call that the jumpsuit bottom whatever part that is kind of hanging off the skirt kind of thing there's plastic that that she has on over everything so there's the flat of the plastic just i took an opaque gray i literally sampled it from the picture I just put, picked one of those light grays. The flat of those trim lines. So as you can see, some of the, the overlay methods that are on right now, some of those, those were applied after. When I actually did all these flats, I applied them all in normal first. And I only did the, the differences in blend modes afterwards. So that's after the fact. But because I've, I've already done it, it's like, it's already in there. The flat for the lips, flat for the eyelashes, and that's it. So that's everything just flatted in, and it's really, really easy because all you're doing is, I mean, I some people do use the lasso tool and and, and draw a frame around the section that they want to color, and then they color in that section. Um, in this case, I didn't do that. I actually just, because I'm doing flats, I just drew around the edges with the color to make my borders and then just quickly filled it, made the brush a little bigger and then filled in the, the middle parts. So, so there, so actually when she's done being flatted out, the picture looks pretty flat and you wonder, wow, like, is this ever going to really, is this actually going to be anything? But then all you do is you pop in the, the grayscale underneath and literally just by, by having that grayscale underneath, that much definition and details added to the picture. Now, this works because of the blend mode. So let's quickly run through the blend modes. There's overlay, and overlay is a blend mode that sort of picks up the values underneath it, and then sort of adds pop to the color. So it kind of enhances the value. If it's lighter or darker, it enhances the lighter, the, the higher values, darkens the darker values a bit. And then, so it just makes everything pop more based on what information is coming at it from underneath. The jumpsuit bottom back, which is the back, is uh, in hard light mode. And I did that because it's plastic and I kind of wanted to have a little bit more of a, a glow or a sheen. So the hard light kind of gives a little bit of a glow to it. Then the flat of the legs. So there's the grayscale underneath. And then that flat of the legs makes it that color that matches her skin tone as you see in the picture. That's an overlay mode. A lot of these are gonna be an overlay because that's really the go-to for, for, for like over color type work, work like this. The flat of the heels is in vivid light because that's, that's why they're kind of glowing like that. The flat of the face is overlay. The torso overlay. The flat on front overlay, these are all just standard picking up the, the values from underneath. The flat of the eye whites, soft light. And this is because I'm, you know, for the, ex 
for the exercise for the class, I mean, you, we're meant to experiment with the with the layers, with the layering types, the blend modes. So that's why I, you know I tried some different things and I just used soft white because I was like, oh, it kind of gives it a little bit of a glowy glowy kind of feel. So, you know, um, you know, I didn't want to get too too deal detailed with this. I mean, if you zoom in on it, you're going to be able to see lots of rough edges and things like that. But um, that wasn't really the point of the exercise. And then, so the flat of the eyes is also overlay. The hair, I gave it soft light just to do something different. And that soft light, um, it gives it a little bit more of a glow factor. The flat of the jumpsuit itself, again, that's the jumpsuit there, is an overlay. The stocking lines themselves, they're an overlay. As I said, overlay does tend to make things pop. So it's very good for jumpsuit bottoms, hard light, like the black, like the bottoms on the other side as well. The flat plastic, I put in screen mode. So screen mode um, is great for transparency type of uh, transparency type of effect because it almost makes everything kind of glow a little bit. You know, and brightens it up because screen mode screens within the brightening section of tools. Then you've got the trim lines. So because the trim lines are meant to glow, I let them be in color dodge. So color dodge brightens things up. It's great for glowing, making stuff glow. Then the lips themselves are in soft light. Again, kind of like the whites of the eyes. And the eyelashes are in hard light because uh, I just want to get some glow because they're kind of tiny, but I wanted you to be able to see them. So I made them glow. But so here's the key. So this, this was it. I mean, at this point, I had completed the exercise and I could have just turned it in like this. But I was having so much fun with the blend modes and changing them and trying what it would do. I kind of wanted to see what it'd be like to, to give a different color. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a cinematographer, so I'm always looking for ways to make the pictures, uh, you know, more interesting using light. So what I, the idea I came out with was the idea of painting a color, just a color blob on top of one half of her body and then a different color blob on the other half, right? So or using that kind of orange and teal approach where complementary co colors on opposite ends of the color wheel are pleasing to the eye. So, you know, right here, I was like, okay, let me paint this blue. And then, um, see that already gives it, and the key is it's in vivid light mode. So that's what's giving it that glow factor, right? So if you look at some of the other modes, if I had put it in overlay, for example, it would it, it does have a nice subtle nighttime glow as if there's some kind of a neon sign across the street that's illuminating things. But I was not going for subtle. I was going for more like club. It's like, well, I'm in a I wanted to dissolve. Of course, that's crazy. But let's just put her back in vivid light. Bam, vivid light. Love it. And probably a lot of artists don't have a need for vivid light, but I found this to be a pretty cool, cool one because, you know, if she was in, like, let's say a nightclub or anything like, you know, some kind of a, you know, weekend party scene type thing. And she's either one of the performers or, you know, eye candy in the club, you know, they're going to have some pretty cool, interesting lighting. And then on the other side of her, I wanted to have a different color, the complementary color. So that's where I have that that orange red coming in from directly. All I did was I went right across the opposite side of the color wheel and I picked that color and I also have that and I have that in pin light. And and that was me just experimenting because it does look cool in vivid light too. So let's see. So that's with vivid light, you know, and it looks cool. I mean, it, it already looks cool, but pin light just has like a, a slightly different 
slightly different glow to it and I just wanted to try something different for this. Um, and then just, just real quick so you can kind of see what these are without, without some of all the other stuff in there. We just turn off a few of these layers. See, like, I mean, and you could just play with the layers also to get cool things, right? So even just that vivid light alone, that yellow and red light, they're both on. You can barely even tell that the, the, the red light's on, but it's there. Like, you know, I could come up with some really cool color effects that way. But to see what I actually have, that's literally what's painted there. So that's so funny. This by itself, it doesn't look like much. So all I did was I took the... I took that blue color, like I mentioned, you know, on this side of the color wheel, and I just painted in all the spaces along her body, you know, where I felt like, um, and I was in normal mode when I did it. So if you think about what this looks like, so let's put this in normal mode, right? So if we look at this in normal mode, and right now the opacity is down. So the let me just remember these opacities. 30% for this one, 66% for this one. So let's make all these 100. I just want to give you the idea of what really what I really did. So that you can just just so you could could recreate this on your own. So so imagine so this is how it starts. You you start with like just a new layer, right? And you're like, okay, let me try this idea. I'm going to paint in this color like this. So this is what the layer looks like. And it, it basically covers the entire thing. And all I did was sit there and paint right on top of the other one, everywhere where I felt like, everywhere where I felt like um, the light would be coming from that side of the club and hitting her body, I just went ahead and painted it. Didn't have to try to be exact. It's not that important. And then for the other side, I went ahead and painted it from the other side. Once again, not very exact or any of that. Then the last thing I did was I went ahead and, and did a Gaussian blur on both of them. And what Gaussian blur does is it blurred the edges so that when these two come together, I didn't want it to be as harsh of a line. So you can see that there's some overlap in, you know, in, in between them. They kind of overlap into each other rather than just abrasively going through each other. If I wanted to, I could actually put even more blur and it would blend a little bit even more. But but the effect I was going for was fine. Uh, a little bit a little bit more towards a clean line uh, generally gives a more um, kind of stylized, you know, nightclub type of feeling. And like really, the light is harsher. So it makes harsher kind of lines as opposed to blending into each other nicely. Um, so, you know, it's a choice, right? It's a deliberate choice that you make. So now, now that you see kind of what I did, then you know oh, it's very easy to then. So these are on both on normal. So you just basically paint right over that. And then that's where I go, okay, let's change it to the, to the setting that I want. So like pin light, for example, that's what gives that nice glow to it. And then this one was the vivid light. So boom, that one's going to start glowing. So that's what it looks like on full 100%. So that's pretty extreme and it's not very realistic. So now is where I start to play with my opacities in order to get, um, and oddly enough, my pen has stopped working. So, so you know, get this down to, I mean, it doesn't even have to be that exact. 63% is probably gonna be just as good as 60. And then on this one, get it to be 30 around 30 percent boom 29 is just fine so there you go so I, so it's it's back set to pin line and vivid light and it's set to the 29 percent and the 60 percent like it was before and so this is what it looks like just straight up off the grayscale and then but now as I start to put the flats in because these are all in blend modes, then you start to see the picture coming together. Just 
stocking lines, jumpsuit bottom. Just watch as everything comes in. Flat lips, and then the flat eyelashes. And I feel like something's wrong because I feel like this looked a little different before. Hold on, let's try to let's try to troubleshoot this real quick. Okay, so that's just my reference layer. That's my gray layer. Okay, so this is what it's like without any of the club lighting that I'm adding. This is what's like when we add the blue from the right. Yeah, yeah, that's it. We're good. We're back. So that's it when I add the blue from the right. And then bam, the blue from the left. So anyway, thanks for watching this video. Um, I, I probably went on longer than I meant to. Meant to. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to give you kind of a breakdown of this image and kind of how how the coloring process uh, came to be. So definitely hit the subscribe button. Um, I'm going to be continuing to share everything that I learn with you as I go on this art journey to become um, to become a fantastic concept artist. See you tomorrow.